ask first grader Holden Mora how his new hand works, and he'll be happy to demonstrate. When I bend my hand in like this, it closes. When I bend it this, it opens. At seven years old, he's become an expert on the workings of this novel device made out of plastic for roughly $20. It's an amazing $20. It's an amazing $20. And normally the materials cost a lot, about like a thousand. So that's Holden Mora. Holden loves Legos, learning, and cats. Well, mostly cats. Uh, Holden once donated his allowance to help save snow leopards that are endangered. Holden's inquisitive, he's energetic, as you can clearly tell, um, and he's just like any other child, except for one small difference. So Holden was born with a condition that prevented the fingers on his left hand from forming. We call this a limb difference. Holden was born with symbrachydactyly. Symbrachydactyly, along with other conditions that cause limb differences, affect 1,500 births in the U.S. per year alone. The prosthetic devices that kids like Holden need can cost hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars. 3D printing, luckily, has opened the door for inexpensive prosthetic devices. Thanks to 3D printing, we can print custom parts for just cents a piece. So I first met Holden Mora about two years ago. Um, his parents had seen on the news where people had started using 3D printers to make prosthetic devices and wanted to see if they could get one for their child. I, I was happy to help. Uh, I went through the summer learning 3D printing. It, it was new to me as well. So I went through the summer learning 3D printing, looking at the different open source designs that were online, before deciding to build the Cyborg Beast for Holden. Uh, the Cyborg Beast is a open source prosthetic hand that, that was created by Jorge Zuniga's research group at Creighton University. Now by the end of the summer, we got Holden one of these hands, which you can see here. It uh, doesn't look quite like the hand we saw online. It's put together with different colored parts, looks shabby, uh, improvised hardware, you know, we were, we were honestly a little embarrassed, or I was honestly a little embarrassed to hand this off to him, but Holden didn't seem to care. He was happy to get this device. It wasn't some, you know, big clunky metal hook that brought negative attention to him. It was his cyborg hand. This had five fingers and looked close to a real hand, but, but not too close. With this hand, Holden could become a transformer. So through getting this hand to Holden, I realized, you know, the joy that these hands could bring kids. I saw him happy to run around, pick up anything that he could, show uh, anyone that he could find, you know, how this hand worked, how he could open and close it and pick things up. I saw the hope that it brought his parents. They were glad to see their son proud to show off his hand, not hiding his hand in his pocket. Uh, they were happy to dream about what the next cyborg hand would look like and what the future held for their son. So I saw the opportunity to not only help kids, not only help Holden, but help other kids like him. But I knew I couldn't do it all myself. Uh, I turned to my fellow BME students here at UNC who were happy to help. That's how we formed the Helping Hand Project. We are a student volunteer run group that wants to create prosthetic devices hands and beyond for kids like Holden. Thanks to the support of the Carolina community, we were soon able to get a 3D printer and the materials that we needed to make more of these hands. We got Holden the hand that he really deserved. This is the Raptor hand. It was created by a group called Enable. It has bigger fingers, which allows it to pick things up better. It has 3D printed snap-in pins that reduce the, the amount of metal hardware that's needed. It's just a better design all around. Now, we, weren't, we didn't stop at making this hand for Holden. Soon we were able to meet other kids with conditions like his. So this is Sam. We were able to get him a glow-in-the-dark hand. This is Katie. She's our first teenager our first cheerleader. She has been an awesome role model for the younger kids in the group. 
This is Vincent. Vincent was excited to go to school and show his new handoff to his friends. One of those friends happens to be my young cousin. Uh, the cousin came up to me and asked me if I could make him one of these hands, <laughs> even though he's got two fully formed ones. Uh, I don't think he understands why Vincent had the hand, but he sure knows it's cool. This is Isaiah and Rhiannon and Marie, who live nearby in Cary. This is Joshua. Joshua was real shy when we first met him, but cracked a smile once he got his device. This is Brayton and Blake. They became friends quickly, something that's really rare in this area for people whose favorite colors are red and blue. <laughs> so all the kids that I've shown you so far are from the Carolinas, but we've been lucky enough to meet kids outside of the Carolinas as well. This is Gavin from Richmond. Gavin was Tar Heel born and was excited to come down here and get his new Carolina gear as he was to get his hand. Uh, Gavin wants to come to school here when he's older and be a student athlete. This is Olivia. I think we gave her something she can smile about. I don't know if I can say the same thing about last year's Philadelphia Eagles. This is Daniel from Georgia, who was a hit with the ladies in the group. And this is Khalil from Texas. He was quick to use his hand to show off his favorite superhero poses. We were even lucky enough to meet a girl all the way out in Salt Lake City. So you're just moving your wrist? Mm -hmm. That is cool. Okay, show me how you can drink. That is cool. Okay, wave to me. <laughs> so, as you can see, Olivia was able to use her hand as if she had it all her life. I mean, look at that smile. With this hand, Olivia didn't have to hide her hand. She was proud to take it to school to see her friends like Vincent did. They even all lined up ready to get a high five. So I hope you see a common thread through all these kids. And I'm not talking about the fact that they have a limb difference. I'm not talking about the fact that we've given them a prosthetic device. I hope you see that they are all kids. They have their favorite TV shows. They have their favorite toys. They have their favorite movies. And they have dreams of what they want to be when they grow up. So the younger these kids are, the less they view themselves as limited at, by their limb difference. But sadly, this changes as they grow up. Why does this happen? This is Olivia. Olivia is a 13-year-old middle schooler from Ohio. So Olivia, as you can see, has a limb difference like the other kids. She has to go to school, go to middle school, a time that can be you know, rough, embarrassing, um, difficult for kids, no matter who you are. Olivia has to go to middle school every day with a limb difference. She has to deal with bullying, and she has to deal with others, maybe, you know, telling her that she's, she's not normal. And you can see the effects that it can have. I would do like a LeBron James thing, but I'm too short. Good shot. She can do all kinds of stuff. Like she rides bikes okay, okay, with one hand. She uh, ties her shoes. There we go. She uh, plays video games with no issues with it. Like you know how you have to have two thumbs. She doesn't. People like just call me a freak and like just mean. Just really mean. Well, Miss Debbie told me that she came in contact with somebody. I'm Jeff, I do believe, in North Carolina. And she said that he would be working on a hand for me. I thought, man, I'm finally gonna be normal again. So you saw Olivia playing basketball. You heard her brother talk about her. She's a normal kid, just like anyone else. 
It's others that tell her otherwise. It's others that make her think that she's not normal if she doesn't have a fully formed hand. It's kids like these that we really want to help. We cannot be there to convince everyone and to show everyone that she is normal, that she's just like any other kid. But we can start by helping her believe it. For us, that starts by giving her something she can be proud of. That starts by giving her a hand. Grip. Ha, ah, yes. <laughs> She's dangerous with that thing. My sister, she felt like all her life, She's been picked on. Now she's going to be the talk of the town. I think it's really cool. Yes, yes it is. It's very, very cool. So what did you think when you first saw it? Was it what you expected it to look like? Kind of. I wanted it to be pink, but... <laughs> it's still a hand. I'm grateful. Now, I'm glad to say that we'll soon get Olivia her pink hand. <laughs> But you can see the, the impact that one of these hands has on a child's life. Not just by increasing the functionality of their hand, but by giving them something to be happy about. Increasing their outlook of themselves, increasing their confidence, you know, giving, some, giving them truly something to be proud about. And this is what the Helping Hand Project is really about. We want to make sure that these kids realize that they, they are not different just because of their limb difference, that they are not any less of a person. They are not abnormal. They can be all they want to be. So we realized early on that we could benefit from introducing these kids and their families to each other. We, we started having get-togethers here in Chapel Hill where the kids that we'd gotten devices to or were working on getting devices to and their families could come up, meet each other, meet the students in the group that were building their child's devices. The kids get to have a lot of fun too. They get to play dress up, meet each other. A lot of these kids are meeting so another child with a limb difference for the first time in their lives. They get to play with other kids that are getting cool new robotic hands like they are and get to form a group based around, get to form a positive group based around what they've often viewed as a negative condition. They also get to meet the older kids in the group that can form role models for them. So Katie has been a huge help to the younger kids in the group. Her and her family are able to talk to the other families and help them work through the issues that they're having with their child. More importantly, they're able to talk about the many successes that they've had. Katie and her family and the group that we've been able to create with these kids and their other families are able to help show the kids that they can be all that they want to be that they can help support their parents to support the childs and help them achieve their goals. And this is what the Helping Hand Project is about. We want to make sure that these kids realize they can achieve their goals and give their parents all that they need to help support the child to achieve their goals. A limb difference does not make you abnormal. A limb difference does not make you any less of a person. A limb difference does not prevent you from achieving your goals. And a limb difference does not prevent you from being the person that you want to be. Thank you. <laughs>